The universe of B-movies is gloriously wacky, sometimes spooky, but always entertaining. These films, often made on shoestring budgets, have a charm and creativity that big-budget blockbusters sometimes miss. Let's dive into B-movies that defied expectations and earned cult classic status. Plan 9 from Outer Space. It's been often hailed as the worst movie ever made, and that in itself is a kind of cult achievement. The film, directed by Ed Wood, is an epic mashup of science fiction, horror, and general absurdity. The plot? Aliens resurrecting the Earth's dead to stop humanity from creating a doomsday weapon. Sure, it makes no sense, but that's part of its charm. Its laughably awful production values, wonky dialogues, and oddball performances have turned it into a staple of bad movie nights. Even though it received a 66% rating on Rotten Tomatoes, it's a prime example of, it's so bad, it's good cinema. What plan will you follow now? Plan 9. Plan 9 deals with the resurrection of the dead. Have you attempted any of this plan as yet? Yes, Excellency. You see? You see? Your stupid minds! Stupid! Stupid! Basket Case is a gritty horror comedy that's equal parts disturbing and hilarious. The film centers around Dwayne and his deformed, formerly conjoined twin brother, who he carries around in a basket. Together, they seek revenge on the doctors who separated them. Basket Case is famous for its low-budget aesthetic, shocking moments of gore, and absurd plot, all of which have helped it gain a cult following. While it's not for the faint of heart, the film's gleeful embrace of its bizarre concept helped it earn a 77% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. What's in the basket? Easter eggs? Pink Flamingos is a film that pushes the boundaries of taste and decency to their absolute limits. Directed by the Pope of Trash himself, John Waters, the film follows the nefarious exploits of Divine, a drag queen who is determined to maintain her status as the filthiest person alive. With its outrageous performances, gross-out humor, and explicit scenes, Pink Flamingo's shocked audiences, yet has since become a beloved classic in the world of underground cinema. Despite its notoriety, or perhaps because of it, the film boasts a 80% rating on Rotten Tomatoes and continues to entertain, disgust, and fascinate audiences today. Just imagine experiencing all that in the same time. Could you give us some of your political beliefs? Kill everyone now. Condone first-degree murder. Advocate cannibalism. Eat shit. Filth are my politics. Filth is my life. Take whatever you like. Ugh. Yes. Here's a film that takes playing with your food to a whole new level. Attack of the Killer Tomatoes is a parody of B-movie horror films and public service announcements. The plot is as absurd as the title suggests. Tomatoes gain sentience and start attacking humans. Yes, seriously. The movie was panned upon its release for its low-budget effects and juvenile humor, but over the years, it has grown a devoted following. It was even successful enough to spawn a few sequels and an animated TV series. Despite a dismal 27% on Rotten Tomatoes, this film is proof that sometimes the sillier, the better. Join Mason Dixon in a race against time as he battles to save the world from the threat of nature's perfect eating machine, the Killer Tomato. <laughs> Reefer Madness, initially titled Tell Your Children, was intended as a morality tale warning parents about the dangers of cannabis use. Instead, it became an unintentionally hilarious, melodramatic piece of propaganda and thus, a cult classic. The movie's over-the-top depiction of marijuana used leading to hallucinations, manslaughter, suicide, attempted rape, and descent into madness is so far from reality that it's downright laughable. With a 46% rating on Rotten Tomatoes, Reefer Madness is enjoyed today as a high, pun intended, point of camp cinema. We're going over to Joe's place, why don't you come along? We have a date to play a set of doubles. Oh, you can play any time. Come on, we'll have some laughs. Can I go along with you? Sure. Hey, I'll see you at dinner, sis. 
If you want a good smoke, try one of these. Often touted as the Citizen Kane of bad movies, Tommy Wiseau's The Room is an incoherent mess of a film that, against all odds, has become a cult phenomenon. Wiseau, who also wrote, directed, and produced the movie, stars as Johnny, a successful banker entangled in a love triangle. With its nonsensical dialogue, countless continuity errors, and bizarre subplots that go nowhere, the Room is a masterclass in how not to make a movie. The audience's bewildered response eventually turned to affection, leading to ongoing interactive screenings worldwide. It holds a 25% rating on Rotten Tomatoes and was the subject of the critically acclaimed 2017 film The Disaster Artist. There is no baby. I told him that to make it interesting. Oh, she's such a manipulative witch. You're hurting yourself. You're hurting our friendship. I treat you like a princess. And you stab me in the back. You are tearing me apart, Lisa! Night of the Living Dead isn't just a B-movie that became a cult classic. It's a film that started an entire subgenre of horror, the modern zombie movie. Directed by George A. Romero, the film revolves around a group of people trapped in a farmhouse, besieged by the undead. The movie shocked audiences with its explicit gore and its bleak ending, but it resonated deeply, leading to countless imitations and five sequels from Romero himself. Despite being produced on a shoestring budget, it's now recognized as a seminal horror classic, holding a 97% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Please! We have got to go get Johnny! Please help me! Please! Don't you know what's going on out there? This is no Sunday school picnic. Don't you understand? My brother is alone! Your brother is dead. No! John Carpenter's They Live is a perfect blend of science fiction, horror, and social commentary, laced with a good dose of dark humor. The film follows a drifter, played by professional wrestler Roddy Piper, who discovers a pair of sunglasses that reveal the world is controlled by disguised extraterrestrials. Although the film initially met mixed reviews, it has since gained a significant cult following, thanks to its memorable one-liners and satirical take on consumerism. With a 86% rating on Rotten Tomatoes, They Live is a beloved classic in the realm of B-movies. masters! What do these things want, and why are they here? You still don't get it, do you, boy? They have recruited the rich and the powerful! They're running the whole show. Wake up! They're all about you! All around you! are sending some kind of signals on the TV sets. I've got one that can see! Mama don't like Tattletail. The Rocky Horror Picture Show is a musical, a comedy, a horror film, and a loving pastiche of B-movies. This gender-bending rock and roll extravaganza is about a young, innocent couple who stumble upon the bizarre mansion of Dr. Frank Furter, a cross-dressing scientist. What follows is a cavalcade of catchy songs, over-the-top performances, and risque humor. Initially, the film was a box office flop, but midnight screenings transformed it into a cult phenomenon. Babies, don't you panic. By the light of the night, it'll all seem all right. I'll get you a satanic mechanic. I'm just a sweet transvestite. Before David Lynch became a household name with Twin Peaks and Mulholland Drive, he directed Eraserhead, a surreal horror film that serves as a perfect introduction to his distinctive style. The film, which follows a man forced to care for his severely deformed child in a desolate industrial landscape, is filled with bizarre imagery, unsettling sound design, and a pervasive sense of dread. Eraserhead was initially dismissed as incomprehensible, but it soon garnered a cult following who appreciated its unique blend of horror and surrealism. Today, the film is regarded as a masterpiece of the genre, with a 90% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Carnival of Souls is a low-budget horror film that has been praised for its atmospheric and eerie tone. The film follows a church organist who is haunted by ghoulish apparitions following a car accident. 
though largely ignored upon its initial release, the film gained a cult following through late-night television screenings and has been praised for its innovative use of locations and unsettling organ score. It has a Rotten Tomatoes rating of 85% and has influenced many filmmakers, including David Lynch and George A. Romero. But she must watch herself in death. She must dance at the Carnival of Souls held just for her, for they have come for her for the last time, claiming her as one of their own. Often found in the list of So Bad It's Good movies, Troll 2 is a disaster that blossomed into an iconic cult film. Interestingly, there are no trolls in Troll 2. The villains are vegetarian goblins who transform people into plants before consuming them. Don't ask. The movie's cringy acting, nonsensical plot, and low-quality special effects have transformed it from a cinematic catastrophe into a lovable oddity. It even inspired a documentary, Best Worst Movie, exploring the film's surprising popularity. Goblins don't exist. Goblins don't exist. And remember... They're eating her! Me. Bubba Hotep is as eccentric as its name suggests. The plot features an aging Elvis Presley, played by Bruce Campbell, now living in a Texas rest home, who teams up with a man claiming to be John F. Kennedy to battle an ancient Egyptian mummy. This weird concoction of horror, comedy, and melancholic reflection on aging has since found a devoted audience who appreciates its odd humor and surprisingly touching moments. Bubba Hotep has a 78% rating on Rotten Tomatoes and solidifies that in the realm of B-movies. The stranger, the better. What we have yet, Shady Rest, is an Egyptian soul sucker of some sort. Some kind of Bubba Hotep. You know, a mummy hiding out, feeding on the sleeping. The Blob is a quintessential 1950s B-movie featuring an alien amoeba that consumes everything in its path. While the special effects may seem primitive by today's standards, the movie's tension and unique villain were enough to make it a hit. This film's cult status was secured with midnight movie showings and a catchy theme song performed by Burt Bacharach. The Blob spawned a sequel and a remake, earning a 67% rating on Rotten Tomatoes and a special place in the heart of monster movie fans. Rounding out our list is the superhero film like no other, The Toxic Avenger. This trauma entertainment film follows a bullied janitor who falls into a vat of toxic waste and transforms into a mutated superhero. The film perfectly encapsulates trauma's unique brand of gross-out humor, over-the-top violence, and social commentary. Despite its initial limited release, The Toxic Avenger has since spawned multiple sequels, a musical, and even a children's cartoon series. The first superhero born out of nuclear waste. Yes, the muggers and the rapists didn't know what law and order was until The Toxic Avenger came to town. Holy shit! I don't know what it was, but it saved my life. <laughs> 